obligated to talk about France. It was really fun, really. Okay, one thing though, every meal is like super important in France, except for breakfast for some reason. For lunch and dinner, everyone sat down together as a family and talked. But for breakfast, they were just like, here's a croissant. Okay, let's go. I mean, breakfast is only the most important meal of the day. And I was going to make a joke about how they have an entire aisle of cheese in the grocery store, but I realized back home we have an entire aisle for candy and ice cream. So whatever. We went to the Louvre, which was like, so amazing. They had really cool art by famous people. They had the famous statue with no arms. They had these really fancy rooms because apparently people used to live here. And probably the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. That room was super crowded. And right behind the Mona Lisa, there was a super tall painting that probably took 20 years to make. The picture frame was as wide as my body. But were people crowded around this one taking pictures? No. I don't even know what this one's called. The American school system has failed me yet again. And as someone who likes to draw, I thought it was really cool to look at the amazing color and details. Also, I took a bunch of pictures of butts. Look, this is the really famous no arm one. Look at her butt. So I had a good time. But afterwards, we went to the Picasso Museum, Modern Art Museum, and this other one. I forgot its name. It was French. And it's kind of weird going into these places as someone who likes to draw cartoons. Oh, I like the colors. They're pretty neat. And oh, putting the face on the side of the head. That's, that's an interesting design. But I kind of have to draw the line somewhere, Picasso. I mean, just look at this. Why is it framed? Someone, someone framed this. And Picasso was a good artist. Shoot, he's better than me. So why did they go with this stuff to hang up? Would you call this his best work? It's not just Picasso. Look at the modern art museums. My favorite piece was the painting of a black ring. In fact, I loved it so much that I drew over it in my phone and probably spent more time and thought than the actual artist. I'm not saying the more real a painting looks, the more artsy it is. Wait, yes I am. I mean, look at my drawings. No, seriously, look at them. Their heads are super round and they're so white they can't dance. If I entered an art contest against Leonardo da Vinci, he would win because his stuff took talent. It's not easy to draw something that looks exactly like it does in real life. But cartoons? They're easy. They're so easy. And I know I'm leaving out paintings with color schemes and forms. Now after seeing this, I've come up with something called the Keith Haring Principle to help people like me better understand modern art. In the late 70s, a man named Keith Haring drew graffiti in subway stations and had sort of a unique design. Whenever he started to draw graffiti, he never thought about what the finished product was going to be. He just drew whatever he felt like. He ended up making thousands of them and people started to notice his unique characters. Soon he got more and more famous and popular. Now he's at the point where you can buy t-shirts and mugs of his drawings. And I think that's really cool. They're interesting designs and I would wear them. Do they belong in a museum? No. Keith made thousands of these small simple drawings. They're still art but not art people should pay to see. They should pay to wear and drink out of it. And by the way, this stuff is in no way research, so I'm talking completely out of my butt right now, but I think Picasso and the circle painting should be on t-shirts or kids' books 